bare line in the box here and welcome to this tutorial on how to animate the Dino Apocalypse. And why the Dino Apocalypse? Well, for obvious reasons. I hate dinosaurs. Nah, I'm just kidding. Dinosaurs hate me. <laughs> Alright, enough jokes. Let's jump in. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to animate the main meteor. So right here I have a default project open with a default emitter and particle. And the first thing I want to do is import an image of the meteor itself. If you have a look at my image folder, you can see that I have a separate image for each element. And you see as well the image I used for the meteor. Obviously you can draw your own meteor image however you want it to look. Personally I simply downloaded an image from Pixabay and prepared it for animation. To import the image into my project, I could theoretically create an image object inside my layers tree and then load my image into it, but the fastest way would be to simply drag and drop the image into my project. Just like so. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is bring the meteor down to the correct size. So inside of the meteor's properties panel, I'm going to reduce the scale. Whoops, that was a mistake. I reset the value to its default of 1 by right clicking it. Before reducing the scale, I want to lock in the image proportions. Now I can easily scale the meteor down to the size I want. Just like so. And let me move it down. I place the meteor in the corner so that I can add the smoke and fire trail in the top right. I'm gonna start animating the meteor. So let's turn the particles invisible for now. First I want to add a nice shake animation to the meteor. So in the layer box I'm going to select the meteor and then in the general section I'm gonna add the shake node. Then I connect the input node to the shake node. The parameters are set to zero, so currently the meteor is not shaking. By increasing the values it will start shaking. Now I want to increase the smoothness of the shake to make it look more realistic. Since the smoothness reduces the intensity of the shake, I will play around with the values a little more until I get the results I want. I move the meteor a bit further down into the corner and now let's add the fire trail to it. We're gonna create it with particles. So let's turn the particles visible again. Now the particles are moving into every direction. I want them to move towards the upper right corner into the correct direction, to leave a trail in the direction of the falling meteor. We can change that in the particle settings. Let me quickly rename the particle and now I can modify the direction in the particles properties panel. Then I move into the direction tab. To explain to you the values, if you have 0 degrees, you move horizontally to the right, 90 degrees moves upwards, 180 degrees to the left, 270 downwards and 360 degrees to the right again. It goes full circle. The direction I'm looking for lies somewhere between 20 and 40 degrees. That looks pretty good. Next I want the fire to be a little bit larger. Right now it looks as if it comes out of a little hole inside the meteor. To fix that I select the emitter in the project layers tree and in the properties pane I increase the width and the height. And now we have a larger emission area from which the particles origin. That looks much better. Now I'm going to select the particles again and modify them further. Right now the fire trail is too short. So I'm gonna increase the particles lifetime to have them travel further away before they die out. I move into the life tab. Let's try about 3 seconds. You can see that the length of the fire trail jumps back to where it was in the beginning every second. And the reason is that the timeline is currently set to 1 second while the particles lifetime is set to 3 seconds. So after 1 second the timeline will reset. To fix that I set the timeline's duration to 3 seconds. The particles are moving outside of the canvas, so I'm gonna decrease the particles lifetime a bit. Much better. I'm placing everything a little bit further down again. Now let's change the color of the fire trail. I select the fire trail particle 
and in the color tab, I select the fire preset. If you wonder why you don't have all the color presets that I do, I created a color preset pack that you can download for free on my itch page. Now that looks much more like a fire. Now let's change the particles image. I move into the library panel and in here I select this smoke particle. This particle is much bigger than the one we had before. So to reduce its size, I go into the properties section and into the size tab. After reducing the size, I also want to add a size increase so that the fire becomes bigger as it moves away. You can see how suddenly the fire appears and especially disappears at the end. So to create a smooth transition, I'm setting the alpha value of the birth and death color to zero. Maybe I'm going to increase the opacity for the birth color a little bit. I'm gonna place the emitter a little bit further down. I go back into the particles life tab and here I'm gonna increase the life again because with the reduced alpha values the trail became shorter. And now the fire has become way too thick. So I'm gonna set the increase value a little bit lower, for example to 0.2. That looks about right. Now the fire is not dense enough. And to increase its density and add more particles, I'm going to go back into the emitter settings. And here I increase the amount value, which will increase the amount of particles that are spawned. Whoops, well that's too many. Now here's another trick that you can use to make it look much more fire-like. Let's move into the particle size tab again. And here we are going to add a size wiggle. Maybe that's a little bit too much, so let's reduce it a little bit. That looks great. Now I believe I should also increase the speed a little bit to make the flames move faster. I like that speed much better. But as you can see, now again it isn't dense enough and the trail has become too long. So I need to go in again and adjust the particle's lifetime and the emitter's emission amount. I'm also going to increase the canvas size a little bit. And with all that adjusted, we have a pretty solid looking fire trail. I want the meteor to be on top of the fire. So inside the layer tree, I'm going to drag the meteor layer above the emitter layer. Great! Now I also want to add a black smoke trail. And for that I can actually very easily duplicate and reuse the fire trail particles that we already created. I'm right clicking and duplicating the emitter. Then I duplicate the particle in the same way. Drag the duplicated particle inside the new duplicated emitter. And for clarity I'm going to make sure that I name everything correctly. Now let's turn the duplicated fire particle into a smoke particle. I go into the particles color tab and here I select the smoke preset. Because I do not want the smoke to glow, I'm gonna untick the additive parameter. I will also reduce the birth alpha value to zero and move the smoke particles up a little bit so that it trails behind the fire as it would do in real life. And there you have this epic looking fire trail. Now when a meteor enters the Earth's atmosphere at extreme speeds, there will be an enormous friction with the air and at the front of the meteor, it will start glowing and heating up. So I want to recreate this effect as well. For that, let's create a new emitter with particles in it. This glow effect will be on top of the meteor. So I'm going to drag the emitter to the very top of the layer tree. Let's place the emitter correctly on top of the meteor. And I'm also quickly giving everything its correct name. Now let's modify the particle to turn it into the glow effect that I want. I move into the direction tab and I set the direction angle to about 31 degrees. And I set the maximum value slightly higher than 31 to create a little bit of variation. Now let's select the emitter and increase the emission area. Awesome! After adjusting the canvas preview, let's further modify the particles. I move into the particles color tab 
And again, I select the fire preset. And now I change the midlife and death color to a slightly orangey yellow. Just as before, I change the particle shape to the smoke image. Then go into the size tab and reduce its size. But this time I'm also gonna change the particles scale to make them much longer and thinner. Now you see all the particles are vertical pointing upwards, but I want them to point into the direction that they're moving. So inside the direction tab, I change the orientation to direction and whoops, let's go back to the size tab because I scaled them the wrong way. So I quickly swap the X and Y values and now our particles beautifully point into the direction that they're moving. Next, I'm going to right click the emitter and change its blend mode to additive. The additive blend mode makes all overlapping colors brighter and more intense. So this way we achieve this cool glowing effect. I'm gonna make the emitter regions visible again and to avoid that some of the glowing particles spawn outside of the meteor, I'm gonna set the emitter shape to ellipse, which resembles the round elliptic shape of the meteor. Now I'm going back into the particle settings and the next thing I want to set is the speed, because right now the particles move way too far beyond the meteor inside of the flames and I want this glow effect only on top of the meteor. Something more like that. Now let's go back into the color tab and again for a smoother effect we are going to reduce the birth and death opacity to zero. You can already see how cool this glow effect starts to look. However, I'm actually not satisfied with the speed because it looks like it is glowing in slow motion and that is not the effect I want. So let's go back, I'm gonna increase the speed again. And since the particles are moving much faster now, they're moving way beyond the meteor again. So because I decided to change the speed, I have to adjust the lifetime and the emitter parameters a second time. Clearly, I have to increase the particle amount, because the glow is barely visible. Well, maybe not that much. I set the particle amount to a few less, and now that looks really perfect. With that done, I can now add a few more really cool effects to the meteor with the node system. I want the meteor, the rock itself, to glow. And an awesome way to achieve that is the Bloom node, which you can find in the color section. The Bloom effect is very similar to the brightness effect, only that it makes things look more glowy. The Bloom effect only increases the brightness of the parts of the image that are already lighter, which creates this nice glowing Bloom effect. To turn this Bloom effect even more dynamic, I'm gonna make it slightly fade in and out. Since the meteor is surrounded by fire that flickers on and off, stronger and weaker, the meteor itself should light up and dim down. For that, I move into the time section and select the sign slash ping pong modifier, which changes the value of an effect, moving it up and down, up and down, left and right, just like a ping pong ball. So as soon as I connect the sign modifier to the bloom amount, the bloom effect starts fading in and out, in and out. Now I don't want it to fade out entirely, so I set the lower range higher and I also increase the speed to make it glow up faster. And there you go! Now we have this cool effect where the rock shines and glimmers as if it was on fire. And I'm gonna show you one last really cool effect that we can add to the meteor, which is the outer glow node. You can find it in the color section. I connect the node to the effect chain and then obviously I don't want it to have a black glow. The rock is on fire after all, so I give it a yellowish glow. I increase the glow amount and I place those particles back that got misplaced by accident. And with this outer glow, now there is this nice shiny subtle halo around the meteor. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you animate a meteor that is powerful enough to destroy anything in its way. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button. If you have any further questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I will make sure to answer everything. 
And if you want to watch a tutorial on how I animated the entire scene with the dinosaurs and such, you can subscribe to my email list in the link below, which will give you access to the additional tutorial. Until then, see you in the next video and, most importantly, have fun animating!